Welcome to Papa Junk Shop. Now in the process of trying to clean the garage up, of course, I run into some items that I needed to put away or get rid of or you know how it is. So I had this uh, part of a mini drill press left from uh, my radial drill press build. Wasn't good for much of anything else except parts. And uh, I thought it might be nice to have a magnetic drill press. Or a magnetic drill, I guess, not really a drill press. But one of them you, you stick on your uh, metal and then use it sort of like a drill press. Um, so I found this and I got some. Uh, electromagnets that I saved from car air conditioners that I'm going to use for the magnetic base and my plan with this is I'm going to have this part move up and down with a drill mounted here instead of the quill going up and down. I'm going to use the quill but it's going to be uh, in here and that's tight fit. Now, anyways, this will be mounted on a, on a post, which I can adjust up and down. So if I got real short drills or longer drills, I should be able to use it. And this will actually be stationary. And when you turn the handle, this part's going to go up and down. So it's as usual going to be one of them that I do it as I go so uh, might be some changes made along the way who knows now what I'm going to use is I have a Milwaukee half inch pistol grip drill that's reversible variable speed it's just kind of an extra one I've got several other ones so that's what I'm going to use for the actual drill motor so I got this marked. I'm going to take it over on the bandsaw, cut this back half of it off. So see you in a bit. it in frame you might be able to see it. So that'll be the part that actually moves up and down. Not sure if I'm going to close that in or just how I'm going to close it in but when you say she's as, as we go project. Probably not necessary but just thought I'd do this just to give me a good working surface in case I do decide to use something there. I just threw it in the mill. I'm going to mill that edge off so it's all nice and square and flat. Okay, got that all machined off nice. I'll show you. If I try to use it like that, when you pull the handle, the drill's going to go up. So That's what's making it complicated. So, what I have to do is turn this the other way. So, now it'll go down. Because that'll be, the old quill will be stationary. The drill will be mounted on here. So when I go like that, it goes down. So the drill will have to be mounted here. So I guess next I'll get this piece of stock turned down so it'll fit in there. 
and uh, hurry up and make a bushing for here so that's not slopping around in there. So go ahead and do those things. Started turning that tap down. Okay, I'm making the bushing for the uh, <coughs> goes in the casting. Got the outside part turned down so it fits the casting. Taking the last pass on the inside. And then we'll give it a try and see how she fits. Okay, let's give her a whirl. Gonna be just about right. So now I gotta part it off. Gotta figure out how thick it's gotta be. Now in this casting, it's gonna go right in there. And you can see there's a snap ring groove there. That's where the bearing was. And there's another snap ring groove down in there further. I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not. Yeah, just barely probably. But that's where that's gonna go. Okay, I got the bushing cut off. Fits on here nice. I got the snap ring reinstalled in the bottom groove. This will slip in there. Got the other snap ring in the top groove. So when this is mounted on this post, like so, then this will go up and, go up and down like it's supposed to, with the drill mounted on there. Making progress. Okay, this is the half inch Milwaukee drill that I'm going to use. And I'm going to mount it using this collar here and the <clears throat> mount for the uh, handle and then I might get some kind of support on the top. I haven't, haven't come up with a plan for that yet. But, <clears throat> of course you measure this and of course it's not anything normal. It is 1.807. <clears throat> so this is a piece of 3-8 stock that I'm going to use to make the clamp and I've got it laid out <clears throat> and what I'll do is I'll uh, do a hole saw hole here get it close inch and three quarters and then I can bore it out the rest of the way with the boring head on the mill and then I'll figure out how much of this I want to cut away here and square that off there. Do the same over here. Then I'll put a slot in here and I'll use a bolt to pinch this together to, to clamp onto that um, collar on the drill. So that's going to be the next piece we make. Okay, I'm going to do the hole for the uh, drill bracket. I got a pilot hole drilled, quarter inch, going to use a hole saw. And we're going to throw some oil on there. Now 
I got it hanging over enough so I can try the drill in there, size-wise. So when I put my boring, boring head in, everything should be in line. So that'll take a while to get through there with the hole saw, so see you when we get her done. When you're using the bridge port and the hole saw, <laughs> and the hole saw stops, and the bridge part doesn't, that's what happens. Now you got a two-piece hole saw. So, and I'm not all the way through yet. So, it's going to get interesting. have to figure out how to get her the rest of the way. Hey, I got lucky. Had another hole saw. Was able to finish it up. Uh... But this time I did loosen the belt so that if it did catch that the belt would slip. So that might be something I wish I would have thought of it to begin with, but that's how you learn, I guess. So we'll get the drill over here and uh, give it a test fit. And then uh, probably have to get the boring head in and get the hole the right size. Now the chuck's just a little bit smaller than that shoulder, and the chuck starts down in, so it won't go all the way, so. Boring head's coming next. Okay, I got the board head in there, and did a couple cleanup passes. There we go, I don't know, like ten thousandths. Just hand feeding this. This doesn't anything precision. So. Now we'll take a quick check. Yeah, pretty close. I got this set to the right size, so we'll just keep doing that till we get the whole right size. Okay, I took two more passes, measured it, and it seemed like it was about right. Just fits just nice and snug. So that part of her is done. Now we dare to take it out of there. So next, I guess we'll do some trimming up and get the slot in there and the bolt through to pinch it in place. Okay, I got it roughed out on the bandsaw. These edges are pretty pretty crude. Um, the half inch blade doesn't cut a radius that short so you have to take little pieces out so it's kind of jagged so I'm gonna smooth them edges up with a file but I'm gonna use my automatic filing machine which I very seldom use and it probably would be easier to use the 1x42 belt sander but I just thought I'd like to use this. Now this is a junkyard find and it's one of them projects that I never got around to doing anything with except oiling it up and making sure everything was looped and it works. But I never did make it pretty. And I never put a switch on it. So I just plug it in. And that's how she works. Just got a flat file in there. Uh, this is what the files look like. They got a round shank here. This is a square one. And you can use a regular file in it too. And there is a clamp so you can clamp the upper side. But this file is so short by the time you get it in the clamp there isn't room for the work. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish that off. You guys don't want to watch all that. That will take a while. Okay, I got this piece pretty much done except for drilling the holes in here where it's going to bolt onto the casting. Um, I decided to have it go back a ways on that casting further to make it a little more stable. 
Yeah, I just took the plasma cutter and cut that out. And uh, that's what happens when you sneeze and you're plasma cutting. And uh, it's not going to show, so it don't have to look real pretty. I just touched it up with a file a little bit. I got my hole through here, tapped, and counterboard just a little bit, so it's got a nice flat surface. So that'll go in there. And it seems to fit nicely. So, I guess we'll get her mounted on the casting and then uh, go to work on a, a top piece and then a backing piece to go here on the casting. And then I can make the uh, mount where this is going to go in to support it. Okay, I got the top plate made just about the same way I made the other one. <coughs> And I've laid out the backing plate, which is going to go about right there. And it'll be this wide. It'll come down and have a bump out. That's for this one hand. Okay, that's going to go there. And this will be where this fastens onto the plate. <coughs> and then once I determine for sure where all this is going to be, I think I'll have a stud that goes in there and butts up against the top of the drill. So I'm going to get that thing cut out now. Okay, I got her all drilled and cut and Got a spacer made for here. I was thinking about running a bolt through and using the threads that were in there, but then I thought it's going to be difficult to get back in there, so I'll just run it through the front side. It'll be easier. And I got this back piece made. Just a couple spacers, 3 8 bolt. Snugs it right down in there. If you don't move at all. So now, I guess determine, I cut this off here. I don't know if I'm just going to keep it square or if I'm going to taper it a little bit or just what. But we'll figure that out and then I'll have to weld this along here and this along here to weld these plates onto this plate. And there in turn bolted on there and there. So should be a good solid mount. Okay, I got the plate welded onto the casting. Used the new welder. Looks like it did did alright. So this part should be pretty well done now to work on getting it mounted on the post. Hey, I got a little <clears throat> mock-up of what I got done so far. Um, I made a uh, piece out of aluminum to clamp onto the quill. Takes the place of uh, this, which was plastic, which was for the uh, uh, depth stop. And I knew that this little spring here on the original drill press wasn't going to be enough to <clears throat> pick up this heavy drill and all this extra material I've put on there. So that's why I made this aluminum piece. It just clamps on the same as the other. I put a couple little bosses out and added a couple of helper springs. So I'll put it up on... I don't have the holes drilled for this to 
the lock on the post yet because <clears throat> I wasn't sure where it was going to be till I got these springs and stuff in place so I can uh, I can just clamp it up, up at the very top and show you how it works so far. Yeah, I got her clamped. That's what we got done so far. Okay, here's my setup for drilling the holes in the quill and the column. I've got a couple of V-blocks set up in the vise. Got it all square and level. It's like within a within a thousandth from one end to the other. Not very good at cranking and holding the camera, am I? But that's my setup. <clears throat> To get it level and square and once I get my first hole through here they all should be the same all the way up through so I'm gonna go ahead and do that okay the first hole through the quill and the post seems to be successful So now the drill press has two inches of stroke, so on my uh, DRO I move down two inches and I'll drill another hole there, two inches a hole, two inches a hole. And it should give me the, uh, any place I set that I should be able to get the full amount of travel. So I'll get those other probably three holes done. Okay, I was successful getting all the holes. There's number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. So I was a little leery about how that was going to turn out, but it turned out okay. Hey, I finished up the pin that's going to go through to hold this in place. Uh, put a knob on the end of it, cut it off to the length. This is how the end end works. And let me shove it through there and show you. Just flip that down and it won't come out. There's nothing to lose. So I think that's going to work good. Hey, I think that uh, the post and the drill holder and all that part of it is pretty much done except for putting a flat spot on the, the post where it's going to bolt onto the magnetic base, but I'm not going to do that until I get the base made because I'm not sure how thick it's going to be. But these are the electromagnets <coughs> out of car air conditioner units that I've saved. I wish they were both alike, but they're not. This one's a little higher. This one's a little bigger around. So, <clears throat> makes it a little more interesting, I guess. But, I got a 12 volt transformer, bridge rectifier, and a capacitor. And I, I wind up with a little over 12 volts. And let me plug it in. Of course, now they won't move. This is a piece of quarter inch plate. And you can see that it's pretty dang strong. I'm afraid if I go any more with it, I'm going to either bend a screwdriver or bend this metal. But they really hang out. Oh, there she goes. They really hang out. So, two of them, I think I'll have plenty of hold. I do have a third one, but I think that would make it big and bulky. This one's even bigger around yet. So, i got to figure out how to get them mounted. That'll be the next next move, I guess. Now this video is getting kind of long, so I might cut it off here 
make this a part one. Uh, so if you like what you're seeing so far, give me a thumbs up and please subscribe. See you next time.